The following is a production of Florida State University's Office of University Communications. Coming up on FSU Headlines, raise the torch. Florida State University rallies for education. Magnetic diagnosis. MagLab researchers make a breakthrough in the analysis of strokes. And who's in? Florida State Athletics prepares for postseason play. Stay tuned for these stories and much, much more. FSU Headlines starts now. Hello and welcome to another edition of FSU Headlines. I'm Dennis Schnitker. Our top headline this month, Florida State University launches its ambitious $1 billion fundraising campaign during a special weekend of events. FSU Headlines reporter Mark Vaughn has the story. Well, welcome and thank you for being here to help us publicly launch the Raise the Torch campaign for Florida State University. During a special kickoff event at the Westcott Plaza, Florida State University launches its $1 billion fundraising campaign. The campaign is called Raise the Torch, the campaign for Florida State. And it's the largest fundraising effort in school history. We stand on the shoulders of giants of many generations who have come before us to build a really excellent university. Um, but in our world, we're in, in some ways in an arms race with other universities for recruiting top talent, uh, recruiting the very best faculty we can, re recruiting the best students that we can. Uh, this campaign is going to continue to allow us to do that. The goal of these fundraising efforts is to help the university improve the student experience, serve as an economic engine for the state through research and job creation, and improve the quality of life for society as a whole through the creation and dissemination of knowledge and ideas. It's also an opportunity for the university to support its efforts to be a top 25 public university. Becoming recognized as one of the top public universities in the country is an important and achievable goal for Florida State. And if you look at the metrics, we're already in the top 25 on many of those metrics, including alumni giving at uh, about 17 percent uh, and student uh, admissions and student retention, which are two key metrics as well. The areas that we tend to fall short in that rankings are related to financial, uh, th our finances. That is, we have uh, fewer faculty per student, and that's a function of how many we can hire, and we have fewer resources per student than most of our peer institutions. Uh, obviously, a campaign of this magnitude is going to help us uh, make a big dent in those two metrics. The fundraising efforts have already been incredibly effective. And this is our reason to celebrate today. With thousands of generous donors raising more than $610 million before the campaign went public. That we have people that love Florida State and are willing to invest in us. Um, that $610 million, that means a great deal to this campus. And the people that have provided that level of support, some of them have provided small amounts of money, some large amounts of money, it all matters. And uh, so I think that this is, this is a remarkable reflection of how much Florida State means to people and how much they believe um, our potential is going forward. For FSU Headlines, I'm Mark Vaughn. The festivities didn't end at Westcott. FSU also played host to a special gala celebration to thank donors for their support. The Donald L. Tucker Civic Center at Florida State was transformed into a garnet and gold themed ballroom. <laughs> Donors, friends, students and alumni enjoyed a beautiful event that showcased the past, present and future of Florida State University. A great way to announce the Raise the Torch campaign. And for more information about how you can join the fundraising efforts, visit raisethetorch.fsu. Edu. The Florida State University faculty has honored nuclear physicist Mark Riley as the 2014 Robert O. Lawton Distinguished Professor. It's the highest honor the faculty grants one of its own. And Riley's colleagues will tell you he is a well-deserving recipient. I'm studying the structure of atomic nuclei using um, high-resolution gamma ray detectors and I've been fortunate to work on the development of the most powerful gamma ray detectors in the world. So all the detectors are pointing to a common point 
where we place our target. The joint nucleus is the heart of matter. It's this tiny dot at the center of the atom. And um, it's a very strange, mysterious, and fascinating system. And we still have a great deal to learn about it. But uh, these, these detectors, like I said, are helping us reveal new features of the atomic nucleus and its structure that have, has never been possible before. The recommendations of people across the world uh, noting just how important Mark's work has been uh, in his discipline. But beyond that, I mean, he's asked to speak internationally. He's been able to attract the very best graduate students and postdocs in the country. Uh, he has tremendous collaborators. Um, so that is an important part of why he was selected. He also is a great teacher in the classroom with undergraduate students. Uh, another thing that Mark has been very successful with is his service uh, to the academic community here at Florida State. He's been a chair, associate chair as well. Did a great job in both. The students that have worked in the Gamma Cave, done amazing work, got their PhD and gone out into the wider world. Oh, that's, it's totally brilliant. It's, it's why I'm here. I remember I was uh, offered a position at a national lab doing pure research, but I, I realized very early on I wanted to be at a university and interact with young people. Um, you know, they, there's a lot of smart young people out there and they're curious too, and they ask a lot of interesting questions. And so there's, there's no doubt that I enjoy research, but I enjoy teaching and working with young people people enormously. The fact that he is a charismatic, demanding instructor, he sets high standards in his classes, students love him. Um, he is focused on the use of technology, really the cutting edge technology uh, in the classroom with the students that is truly designed to enhance student learning and student success. So on the teaching side, um, he's He's remarkable and very well respected. He takes the job seriously. He has a sense of responsibility. He will do uh, just about anything you asked him to do um, if he can find the time to do it. Um, and that's what we look for in Lawton professors. He's very deserving for that reason. He is obviously a person of remarkable talent, but he is also a person of great integrity. And you can't miss that when you talk to him. Uh, it's apparent, uh, and I have come to have such a deep respect for him and his role at Florida State. I'm obviously uh, pleased, but I also feel very honored and humbled because there's a lot of brilliant faculty here at uh, FSU doing amazing work, and for me to be selected, that's, that's quite an honor. And the Robert O. Lawton Distinguished Professor Award has been given each year since 1957 to a Florida State professor who excels in teaching and research. Professor Riley was recently honored during a special ceremony at Florida State. Well, coming up next on FSU Headlines, innovative Florida State research reveals new information about strokes. So our hope is that the, uh, what we can do is basically take some of that information about the biology of the cells but also the techniques themselves and translate them to a clinical population so that we can actually impact patient health. We'll take a closer look at how a groundbreaking technique at the National High Magnetic Field Laboratory could help stroke victims when FSU Headlines continues in a moment. A spirit roams these parts. A spirit of respect competition, and academic greatness. Some call our spirit myth. Others call it legend. We call it Florida State University.
When you purchase a Florida State University license plate, you're supporting students, like me. Tag, you're in. Welcome back to FSU Headlines. I'm Dennis Schnitker. Researchers at the Florida State University National High Magnetic Field Laboratory have created a new way to analyze the effects of a stroke. Florida State Headlines reporter Nadia Carone has more on this innovative research. Nadia? Thanks, Dennis. Two researchers at the Mag Lab are using a one-of-a-kind magnet to provide new ways to classify the severity of a stroke. Sam Grant and fellow FSU researcher Jens Rosenberg are using a one-of-a-kind magnet that's seven times more powerful than a typical MRI machine used in hospitals. The MagLab's flagship magnet gives these researchers the ability to look deeper into brain cells and better understand the causes and severity of a stroke. The possibilities of this new method don't stop with strokes. Further research on metabolites using this technique could also be used for analysis of neurological disorders such as dementia, schizophrenia, Lou Gehrig's disease, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's. So uh, spectroscopy and MRI have been around for quite a while now and they're frontline techniques for diagnosis where we really want to see um, our techniques that we're developing in, in collaboration with Weissman and with Champollion is to really enhance the amount of information that we can generate so that you, physicians have a better way of, of diagnosing their patients and also then hopefully tracking not only the evolution of the disease, but the treatments that are used to uh, hopefully stave off the disease. The research continues as they look to describe the metabolic profiles of disease evolution in even more detail. Dennis, back to you. Okay, Nadia, thank you for that report. And speaking of the Mag Lab, a unique collaboration between Florida State's College of Visual Arts, Theater and Dance and the National High Magnetic Field Laboratory will lead to a new look inside the Mag Lab. A group of around 120 Florida State interior design students put their skills to the test to design a new look for the Mag Lab during a special design charrette. The students came up with special interior designs for some of the open spaces at the Mag Lab with the help of their professors and with input from the scientists who use those spaces most. This collaboration between the Mag Lab and the Department of Interior Design has allowed two groups on campus to come together to create a fun and exciting learning experience for students at FSU. And as an added bonus, the Mag Lab will get an updated modern look as a result. The students will be um, uh, trying to re-envision the public spaces of the Mag Lab. Now, that's quite a task because the Mag Lab uh, has not only the scientists and guests that use it, but public visitors, students and tour groups, plus all the uh, folks that work here in facilities and operations and keep the place running. Um, so the students will get an opportunity to examine the uh, spaces as they are now and propose changes to enhance the mission of the Mag Lab and what it means to Tallahassee. Yes, this is a great opportunity for the arts to come together with the sciences, if you will. Uh, the Magnet Lab has uh, open spaces in its lobby and gives tours to thousands of people a year. And uh, the thought is to get the expertise of the folks from the artistic side of campus, if you will, uh, to help us in upgrading the functionality and the impact of those spaces. And the students' work is currently on display in the halls of the Mag Lab. Florida State University's annual sneak peek shows us the future of research. FSU Headlines' Kate Mueller is here now to tell us all about this year's event. And Kate, it turns out this was the biggest crowd they've ever had. That's right, Dennis. Florida State University's Office of Research hosts an exciting showcase of FSU projects that could one day be in your home. The research sneak peek event is an opportunity for the university to showcase new products to the Tallahassee community. The idea is to take the research out of the lab and into the community to show everyone that research at Florida State helps drive the local economy. From non-addictive drugs that treat attention deficit disorder to biocompatible materials that can grow and repair human tissue, there is plenty of groundbreaking research to showcase at the sixth annual Sneak Peek event. Many of the faculty and the students at Florida State University are interested in and have been developing new technology, new ideas that ultimately we like to think would improve the human condition across the globe. What's happening here is this is an opportunity for them to showcase what they're doing, a chance for them to get out and demonstrate what they're doing, and to share that with not only other folks at Florida State University, other folks that might potentially be interested, 
but people in the greater Tallahassee, Leon County community, folks from the business community, the government, industry, private sector, anybody who has an interest in the types of things we're doing here. More than 50 researchers set up during this year's event. Dennis, back to you. All right, thank you, Kate. Florida State University has launched a new campus-wide initiative to help end sexual violence. The student-led No More campaign is educating the campus community about the issue, and Florida State student leaders are using special videos to reach their peers. FSU Headlines reporter Molly Reed joins us now with more. Molly? Thanks, Dennis. The No More campaign is already making a positive impact on Florida State's community, but campus student leaders want to do even more. In order to directly connect with the Florida State community, the FSU Women's Student Union collaborated with several other groups on campus to create a No More public service announcement. Their message to the Florida State community, do your part to help end sexual assault. On average, 43% of lesbian and bisexual women and 30% of gay and bisexual men reported having experienced at least one form of sexual assault. The PSA is just one component of the No More campaign. The Women's Chase. Student Union also worked with the yeah. College of Motion Picture Arts to create a short film called What Would You Do? Uh, the goal of both of these uh, productions so is to raise yeah, awareness about the issue of sexual assault by showing them at the No More What Would You Do? film launch event held by the Women's Student Union. We think that it speaks to students where they are. The fact that students developed it um, makes us uh, more confident that it's going to be something that students will be able to relate to and um, pay attention to. Florida State has also implemented other key initiatives to help prevent sexual violence on campus. A new website is a one-stop destination of resources for victims and other students about reporting and preventing sexual violence. And the university is also hiring a full-time director to coordinate all of the university's Title IX efforts. For more information about Florida State's awareness campaign, visit nomore.fsu.edu. Back to you, Dennis. Thank you, Molly. For the past six years, Florida State's Center for Leadership and Social Change has been bringing awareness to social justice issues through a thought-provoking exhibition. The Museum Style With Words exhibit educates the FSU and Tallahassee community about social issues affecting our area and the world. Throughout the exhibit, attendees are encouraged to participate in conversations that can motivate others to create positive change. This year's exhibit addresses the issues surrounding racial profiling, sexual violence, immigration, and HIV AIDS awareness. It really got deep whenever I went to the HIV section. I know the heartbeat in the background, I was like, is that my heartbeat? Um, but I was walking around and I was, I was actually looking at the stats and they were pretty, they're kind of intimidating and you get a better perspective on it if you actually go see the display and what, what it's done to other people and how like other people have experienced it. So you've kind of, you kind of get a better view on it. Like I was like, wow, this is, that's kind of intense in here. We provide a space for folks to learn about different issues and learn that they um, although they might not be impacted directly by them, that they're impacting our communities around us. And so it's just, you know, making sure that we maintain awareness about things that are just very relevant to our world. Well, coming up next on FSU Headlines, Florida State football, volleyball, and soccer all make a play for the postseason. We all got a lot of room to improve. That's the thing. It's amazing. We still have a lot of room to improve in a lot of areas. And we continue to make those improvements, but we continue to make plays, and we have to make plays in all three areas. We'll see how the teams are doing when FSU Headlines continues in a moment. Welcome back to FSU Headlines. I'm Dennis Schnitker. The Florida State University football team will finish the regular season this month with several key games on the schedule. FSU Headlines reporter Mark Vaughn joins us now to talk about the Seminoles and their quest for a second consecutive national title. Mark? Thanks, Dennis. The FSU football team is in the hunt for the college football playoff, but in order to get there, they'll have to keep playing tough defense and get things going on the offensive side of the ball. The Florida State football team seems to have a knack for making games interesting this season before pulling out close victories. Just take the Louisville game, for example. After giving up a 21-point lead, the Knowles storm back to pick up the big win over a ranked opponent before heading into the rest of their ACC schedule with key games against Miami and, of course, the rivalry game with Florida. There's no doubt the Knowles will be in the postseason, becoming bowl eligible after their sixth game of the year, but an undefeated record keeps them in contention for one of the four playoff spots. 
Undoubtedly, though, the rest of November will provide plenty of challenges on their path to a second consecutive national title. But according to head coach Jimbo Fisher, the mentality of this year's team should get them through those tough moments. Because we tell them all the time, it's not about winning. It's never about winning. It's about your habits. It's about the culture you create, the way you prepare, the way you do things. The results will be there if you do it. Now, we put ourselves in some very uh, tough situations, but our guys continue to affect each other all the time in a positive way. And on to the soccer pitch, where the national runner-up Seminole soccer team from a year ago looks even stronger this season. Playoffs kick off this month with the ACC championships, and the Seminoles head into the ACC tournament with an outstanding regular season in the books. The Seminoles going 16-1-1 and on the year with 12, count them 12 shutouts on the season. Outscoring opponents 49-8. to And the football and soccer teams not the only dominant teams this fall at Florida State. The women's volleyball squad having an unbelievable year in 2014. The Seminoles set a new school record going 23-0 through the month of October and they're looking to carry that momentum into the month of November and beyond into the postseason. They'll look to get past some tough ACC opponents and make a deep run to a potential title. Well, as you can see, Florida State is having a banner year in fall sports. We'll see what the rest of the year has to offer once postseason gets underway. Dennis, back to you. All right, Mark, thanks for that update. Florida State University is working to become the most veteran-friendly campus in the country. And as we celebrate Veterans Day during the month of November, we want to share one of our student veteran stories with you. So, meet U.S. veteran A.J. Ryle. My name is A.J. Ryle, and I was a student veteran at Florida State University. I joined the Army Reserves in 2000 in order to keep myself out of trouble, and it was a good way to help pay for college. I served as a combat military police officer in Iraq. I functioned as mounted infantry, training Iraqi police, as well as looking for high-value targets. After my first tour ended in 2002, I enrolled in college. I chose FSU to be close to home. While at FSU, I deployed for a second time, which postponed my graduation. After I returned home, I continued my education here at Florida State University, and after I graduated, I volunteered for a third tour in Iraq, where I was later injured and medically discharged due to service-connected injuries. After coming back home, I decided to get my master's degree in social work. And with the new programs here at FSU in place to help veterans, I knew this was the right place for me. As a combat veteran, I thought going back to school would be a cakewalk, but it wasn't. I was haunted by my experiences in the field, and I also felt very out of place as a student. And I found it very hard, after being with my brothers and sisters in arms for 15 months, to come to a place where none of them were. Whether veterans want to admit it or not, there's a lot of stress that comes with being on the battlefield. And being able to heal mentally is important in Florida State. They took that into consideration. All the professors let me sit wherever I wanted in class. If I needed to get up and walk out, they let me. I did get extra tutoring, and it, it was great. I've seen Florida State grow in how it treats its veterans over the years. And to be at a university with that kind of support, I can't, there are no words to say how good it makes me feel inside. It's, it's just phenomenal. And you can see other student veterans' digital stories and learn more about the student veteran initiatives at Florida State by visiting veterans.fsu.edu. Well, if you build it, will it float? That's the question at the Whatever Floats Your Boat Regatta at Florida State University's Coastal and Marine Lab. From a canoe made out of old election yard signs to a clunker made out of water bottles, there was plenty to see at this year's recycling event. Take a look. Where we are right now is at the Florida State University Coastal and Marine Laboratory. And uh, what we're doing is having a regatta. Here we go. The regatta is all about recycling. Uh, people are building their own boats out of recycled material and um, uh, picking up a litter and doing something with it. I think it's a blast. It's so much fun. It's a lot of hard work for the kids. And then coming out here and seeing if it works, hoping it does, is a lot of fun. And we're the glowing pickles. Yeah, it was exciting. It was fun just being out there. And it's good to use the recycled materials for something else, give it another life. Children have the door. 
it's just a way to another way to bring the community in and have fun uh, and at the same time uh, try to get something across about taking care of the ocean. The judges were very impressed that they cleaned up the beach and made a boat all out of the same material. And for the third year in a row, Boy Scout Troop 8 out of Wakulla wins the regatta. But the other participants didn't go home empty-handed. There was an award for most creative use of materials, crowd favorite, and the award for the most spectacular failure. Well, that's going to do it for this spectacular edition of FSU Headlines. But you can see more news from Florida State University anytime at Florida State 24-7. It's the official news website of Florida State University, and you can find it at news.fsu.edu. On behalf of everyone here at Florida State University, I'm Dennis Schnitker. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.